Hey guys, thanks for joining the channel tonight. Hope you all are having a great day and a great Saturday. Uh, tonight is the culmination of our PlayStation 2 build. Let's just do it. Bing bong boom. But yeah, this is our PlayStation 2. We did this mod uh, a while back. I've been pretty busy. Uh, doing the streaming thing, but we're finally getting around to doing the uh, thermal performance analysis as well as slapping on a new cooler uh, which we'll talk about shortly and We're gonna play some games on this thing. We're gonna actually prove that this is a viable mod uh, You know some people have told me no oh, Turk. Why are you running this 2400 G? It doesn't have enough horsepower to play any games. They're kind of right <laughs> They're also kind of wrong but you know, we'll we'll put it on stream. We'll let you guys be the judge. Right here, we've got our overhead cam, and this is going to be our PlayStation 2 chassis. Uh, you know, if you don't, if you're not familiar with the build, uh, you can go to my YouTube channel, check out uh, uh, part one to see the parts selection. I go into depth onto why we picked certain components, and then part two, we actually disassemble the machine. Part three, we'll be actually doing the construction of the machine which will require angle grinding, epoxying, and all that other fun stuff. But tonight's part four. So I'm glad y'all are here with us on the stream, but this is our build. It's pretty cool. Uh, it's actually currently live, and that's what we've got going on on the screen here. Uh, down here on the bottom right, we have our desktop. It's a 1080p. Uh, we've got it pumped out through this little uh, HDMI port directly off the back. So this is, for all intents and purposes, a perfectly functioning computer. Uh, we, you know, we got Chrome over here. It's running, you know, doing Twitter things and stuff. So what we got going on here, this is our ADA 64 graph. This is actually going to give us real time data about the sensors regarding temperatures for the CPU, CPU diode, as well as the GPU. The GPU is bundled in with the CPU for this per, uh, build. So it'll be interesting to see how all of those different sensors interact whenever we are performing you know, different types of load scenarios. They call them, quote, workloads, but whatever. <clears throat> Let's get some of this stuff minimized. We're going to pull up some data. We've been, we've been doing a little bit of uh, research and prep before the stream tonight, and we've actually got uh, a little bit of data to talk about. This is a picture of us running uh, Ida 64's stress CPU workload while the lid was on the machine. As we turn the workload on, this system just gets hotter and hotter and hotter and hotter and hotter. Following that slope up, it never truly like flat lines, which indicates to me that we've already met our ther thermal threshold for the system and we gotta have a way to bleed off air, obviously. So naturally, I was a little concerned that this system might not be capable of running any type of intensive workload because most people think stress CPU is not a very you know, stressful workload. So what do we do about it? Well, I went ahead and took some more data and I want to just remove the case. Let's give this Noctua cooler the benefit of the doubt. Let's give it every, every good chance it has. This is their, their uh, it's like their L92, it's like 62 millimeters tall. Actually, it's less, I think it's like 35. Don't quote me on it or I'll put it, you know, if on the YouTube video, I'll put it up on the top right of the screen or whatever. Uh, but this is like the smallest knock to a heat sink you can have. And I wanted to see how it could do. But what this shows us is with the chassis off and running the exact same workload, this cooler combination is able to hit 50C on the, I think this is called the, uh, the T, the CPU diode, or the, it's not the TCTL measurement, it's actually the cooler measurement, which is good. Uh, so yeah, this shows that we've got a really good scenario for temperatures uh, with a synthetic workload. Obvious, and honestly, it's not a very bad workload either. But let's kick it up a notch, let's go to the next picture. I think it's the next one. So let's look at what Ida64 with the FPU is. Uh, a lot of people like to use this workload for, uh, you know, worst case stress testing or testing their overclocks and stuff. I, I myself don't like it for overclocks. 
Honestly, it's not that much worse. Our CPU only went up by seven more degrees. Uh, I actually did add quite a few more or sensors to the scene here. And this is actually running Unigen's Valley workload. Uh, and I added the CPU diode, I added the CPU measurement, and then I also added the GPU. So I ran it at seven, uh, 720p or 1280 by 720 with medium details when that provided a pretty steady 60 frames per second. Uh, you know, it's not a you know worst case workload, but it was definitely 100% utilization on the GPU. And sure enough, the GPU, that's at right at 49 degrees, and the CPU diode, turns out that's actually the measurement we want to be tracking. This cooler, uh, the Noctua low profile, it's like the L9N or something like that, it performs really well. Uh, I can't overclock with this board, unfortunately. So if you're really limited on your clearance issues and you've got plenty of airflow on your computer, uh, this cooler, it, it performs really well. I am actually shocked and surprised. And then another thing I like about this is it's currently a downdraft uh, configuration. So it's pulling air in and the channels, I don't know if you can see it on the screen, they're kind of uh, perpen or parallel with the length of the board and it's blowing air directly across these VRMs, which is super beneficial. And then it's also blowing air down into uh, these dims. And I noticed they were getting a little toasty as well. Overall, this is a pretty decent configuration for a, you know, super small form factor build. So let's look at some of the game performance uh, that I measured on the system as well. I was actually quite shocked at how well some of these games played. Uh, I played CSGO, I played Doom uh, 2016, and then I also played Rust because I stream Rust quite a bit. I was kind of curious if I could play this game with Rust. And of course, if y'all can't track any of this information, I'm gonna be putting this all in my write-up with Tom's Hardware. It's gonna be a beefy build article. This is playing Counter-Strike with the Noctua heatsink uh, with the chassis open. CSGO is running at 1080p high, but my frame rates were pretty crappy. I think I was getting around 30. I didn't have a frame percent, uh, frames per second counter on there. Uh, but it was pretty bad. The GPU is honestly running right at 40 degrees C, so similar temperatures compared to the Unigen Valley synthetic we ran. I also had, I also took some of the uh, clock frequency data measurements through Hardware Info. That'll also be presented in the Tom's Hardware article. This is Doom, Doom 2016. Uh, a lot of people like to say that this game is great for uh, lower end hardware configurations because it's not that graphically demanding and then doom also is playing at 20 frame rates were bad as well i think in this specific configuration 720p is the sweet spot uh, but looking again at our measurements this time the gpu it got up to 50 degrees c so the more demanding graphical workload does impact our CP our GPU performance. And then last, this is Rust. It's kind of a similar scenario as our Doom run, 1080p. I think I was doing simple uh, graphic preset and it the temperatures were similar. 49 degrees C for the GPU, that seems to be you know the max temp. I didn't run Furmark or anything on this, uh, but again, that CPU temperature, it's again, it's a 17 degree delta here. We were seeing deltas of 11 degrees, so I'm kind of curious what the hardware info data says, but our temperatures aren't crazy. But yeah, overall, it runs fairly well with the Noctua cooler here. If I provide plenty of opportunity for airflow, maybe put in, you know, like an 80 millimeter fan down here that like sucks air in through the back, you know, we could probably make this situation work better, but we have a better solution. I got in contact with a company, you might've heard of them, called Asetech. They produce pumps, AIOs, all sorts of cool water cooling equipment for different uh, OEMs, third-party manufacturers. And they were kind enough to provide me with, I forget the model number of it though, 
Uh, it's their 645 LT. This is their 92 millimeter AIO. When I was doing the build, I think in video two is when we were uh, talking about, you know, different types of problems we could run into. I mentioned we've got all this extra space at the bottom of our case. Let's try and find a cooler that would, it will work with. It is literally just a 92 millimeter cooler and it's got your the, the Asetek pump head that everyone's pretty familiar with these days. Fractal Designs runs this. I think Cooler Master might, and I think uh, Thermaltake might run this as well. Lots of vendors use this circular uh, water block for their coolers. And at first I was like, man, this is a perfect solution. It's super small, it's super slim. Uh, it'll work perfectly. But after I actually requested the thing, I thought to myself, how the heck am I going to cool this thing? Well, sure enough, this thing just runs off of a three pin fan header to power the pump. And then the fan just runs off of a standard uh, four pin fan header, PWM style. And it actually uses the same fan as our Noctua cooler that we had before. So once we actually do the performance analysis on this thing, I'm thinking, if I've got the room for it, I'm gonna do a push-pull on this bad boy. I don't know how effective that'll be or how that'll improve our performance. I guess we could try it out. I'm not gonna be mounting this to the chassis tonight. Um, I don't wanna be epoxying everything. I wanna make sure I've got you know, everything lined up. I wanna make some actual standoffs so that this isn't just glued into the chassis. I want this to be removable uh, just in case something breaks. Our goal tonight is to see if this is better than our little eight, uh, knock to a small form factor cooler. My theory is yes, but I do have a couple gotchas, I guess. There's no reservoir, so there's not a lot of liquid here. And then I have no clue how powerful this pump is. So I don't know how effective the water transfer is gonna be. There's not a lot of surface area up here. Granted, it's probably more than our little heat sink cooler over here. Uh, the big benefit is it's also gonna be moving the heat source from on top of the motherboard to the bottom of our chassis. We'll do a little overhead shot of that here in a second. But we're gonna go ahead and start doing the assembly. Uh, this can comes with the pre-applied thermal paste. We will be removing that, mainly for consistency and also, I hate these little pre-applied pads. pad is like really, really thick. Uh, but with AM4, I think I have to, I'm gonna have to figure out how this is gonna be oriented with the build so that everything lines up properly. There's our little computer. She's so purdy. So the problem we have with this Noctua is um, it actually fastens from the back here. So we've got to remove it from the board and then we've got to reinstall it properly uh, onto the machine. Look at that, that's the uh, Noctua heatsink. Let's take a look at it real quick. So yeah, that's the Noctua heatsink. It's very, very small. 18 millimeters worth of heatsink there. Maybe 20. And this thing is, you know, it's pretty small. It's uh, 109 millimeters long by 86 millimeters wide. So it's, you know, it's pretty big, but it's really thin. But honestly, if you're doing a small form factor build, it's exactly what you need. All right, so here we go. We gotta line the sucker up. We're gonna do 
as best as we can a kind of mock install here. So we gotta remember the PlayStation is roughly the size of this right here. The cooler is gonna be pretty close. I'm thinking it's gonna rotate to just like that. This is the back, this is the front. So with that back in mind, uh, that still works. Um, we might have some vertical issues since those pipes or, or tubes are like right next to each other. So we need to put these guys in. Yeah, usually with these Ace Tech pumps, the uh, retention mechanism here is really sturdy. Uh, I don't know if y'all can see that on the stream, but it's jiggling a bit. I'm still not convinced about this tube. I really wish I could like remove the tubes and like chop them, make them cut or route them better. Or slap some thermal paste on this mof mofu. I need to keep this as pristine of a dot. There we go, that's much better. We don't need a CPU spooge. All right, so here's the moment of truth. Um, from here on out, we are committed. All right, that's the, that's the processor. All right, and there we go, guys. That is the crude finale to the build. Um, problems I'm gonna have with this build is this tube is either too short or it's too long, or this one's too long. So I'm gonna have to like squeeze everything into, part, into place for when I do the final build. So let's pull up hardware info. What's our temperature at? We're currently at 44 degrees C idle. That seems high. I am also just, I had just booted, so it could be a little toasty. Sorry if the screen's green. That's just an artifact of uh, the capture card. Yeah, CPU fan one is the pump, and CPU fan two is the CPU fan. But this is the A300M STX running uh, 3.6 gigahertz base clock, boosts up to 3.9. So let's kick off hardware info. Let's see where we're at. Let's kick off uh, IDA64. Let's see where we're at. And I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I don't think this is any better. And in all honesty, it might be worse, which kind of hurts my heart a little bit. So our CPU at practically idle is at 55. You know, SOC plus CPU is around 30 watts, so it's, it's idle. Oh, okay, so, so it's 30C here. The CPU is hot. So maybe uh, this measurement sucks. That's entirely possible. So this 30 degrees, this, this, this uh, sensor in green might be the better indicator. Our uh, GPU is at 27 degrees. So let's kick off the CPU test and see what happens. Uh, the temperature to beat here was 50, but we honestly don't know how um, how accurate that 50 was. So we're gonna let this sit for unfortunately 10 minutes. As it stands now, we are hotter with the CPU stress test. Interesting facts, the CPU is at 105 watts at the moment. Uh, the TCTL T dies at 53. Ooh, man, those V-Regs are hot. So one thing that's already coming to uh, obvies is this V-Reg is toasty. Um, and you gotta remember, I'm running a uh, 
open air right now, so this is ideal airflow. Like 46C on the V-Regs. It's not hot to the touch by any means. Let's go back to the screen. We were getting 50 earlier, and now we're at 64, so that's a 14 degree C delta. I don't know, we can't really draw too many conclusions right now. You know, we're collecting data. We gotta be uh, diligent in our efforts. So we're at 10 minutes into the test. It looks like we've hit uh, stability. We're at right around 55, 56C. You know, ideally we would go longer for the article. I will go longer, uh, but for now, clear it, start it. Oh wow, the temperature has skyrocketed to 70C. That's so weird. This ASRock CPU measurement is BS, man. It's now below. All right, so Noctua FPU open. We were measuring 57C earlier, so that is not good. Let's measure this V-Reg real quick. So it's 26C up here, it's, it's toasty. Oh yeah, the V-Reg is like 64 degrees. We are burning 134 watts. I, I thoroughly thought this Ace Attack was gonna be the ace in my sleeve and that that was gonna make this system super cool. It's entirely possible, you know, I'm, I am running overclocked memory. It's the DDR4 3200 uh, for this kit. It couldn't go any higher. Um, and I mean, we're running a full CPU synthetic right now. So this is outside of the realm of what it was meant to do. You know, we can explain away this entire thing, but uh, the radiator is getting warm. There is some warmth coming out. Uh, what temperature is our regulator at? The regulator is my big thing, because with this solution, we won't have hardly any airflow over the, uh, yeah, we're at 75C on the regulator. Ja, 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 yeah, <laughs> yep. All right, let's stop logging data. This thing cools down really well, so I, I don't think we have a contact issue because we're getting straight down to 30 degrees Celsius really quick. There's just not enough stuff in this AIO to, uh, to cool it properly. Yeah, we're already down to 34C. This, this cooler is good. Don't get me wrong, it is good. Let's see what Val Valley looks like. Uh, yeah, we had it at medium earlier. All right, so let's do this. Let's turn off the CPU stress, clear it, start it. I don't trust that 84 anymore, um, but we're rocking 46C in Valley. Um, that's interesting. Oh, so my theory might have been correct. We'll have to see how it pans out. Um, but the GPU is cooler. We're rocking similar CPU usage. The GPU is cooler. And the CPU, we've got seven degrees to go. May, maybe we're onto something, guys. All right, pretty much all of my temperatures from the ASRock motherboard are reporting 100 degrees. Um, I have no clue if that's accurate or not which is concerning because how am I supposed to trust what's coming out of this this system? But I will say the, the processor temperature is 50C. The SOC power, we max at about 140 and we're averaging about 100 watts. So you know, what Uka was saying earlier, we might be in better shape here. The GPU is at 46. So, you know, maybe games are okay with the cooler. Uh, we are boosting up to 3,900, which is the max boost clock for this. Um, so yeah, I, th I think we might be okay. Let's take a look at the picture. Uh, so after 17 minutes with Valley, 
we were getting 54C on the CPU and 49 on the GPU. Right now we're at 50 degrees C on the CPU and 46 on the GPU. Um, it's hard to say if we're averaging a higher CPU utilization than we were. I imagine we're not. I don't know, I think this would be a good time where we would look at the actual, uh, the GPU utilization. Oh geez, the Elgato is super loud, sorry guys. We'll have to see here in a second. We're gonna actually play some games now. Um, what we'll do, uh, we'll play Doom, I think I changed it to 720. So Doom at 1080p plays pretty bad to be honest. Uh, but at 720p, it plays a lot better. I think that's the one we did. Yeah, we did this one. Oh, we're playing an Ultra. What the hell? Why are we doing that, Turk? All right, here we go. So this is uh, 720p at, uh, oh Jesus. Almost died like right off the bat. <laughs> uh, 720p, it looks like we're actually playing Ultra settings, which is Honestly, this feels like a 45 to maybe 38 frames per second. If you could overclock this just a little bit. Oh, I don't have enough fuel. Oh, I died. Oh, I don't have enough fuel. We gotta keep going. We gotta keep pumping load through this cooler. It's running pretty hot. Uh, 50C, let's pull up the old data. Uh, Doom, Ada 64 Doom. So that's the old data on the left. That's the new data on the right. All right, well, uh, let's see what the uh, what the game looks like. So, let's alt print screen this real quick. So, let's make sure we're looking at the right thing. So, Ada 64, Doom, Noctua, Open, PNG, and this was 1080p data too on the right. So, got to keep that in mind. On the left, we were averaging 52 degrees Celsius on the CPU, 46 on the GPU, and we were pumping, it almost looks like hotter uh, CPU utilization data too. So I'd call that a win. So let's do it right. Let's play a different game now. What game should we play next? We'll play Rust at 1080p. Uh, let's go to, no, we need to stay it simple because we got to keep things consistent. So the pump itself is a little warm. The hoses don't feel too hot. The VRMs are freaking on fire. Like I can barely keep my fingers on them. Ooh. So this is rust. Woo, doggy. Clear it. Stop it. Clear it. Start it. All right. We're logging data. Well, we got the color back in our skin. Let's find a bush or a tall tree. 
tall tree will do. All right, let's see where we're at. Looking at the data. So on the left is our live measurements and on the right is old measurements. So CPU diode 49 for the new measurement and 46 on the GPU. Whereas I previously was at 51 and 49 and I'm pumping out larger CPU utilization numbers here. I'm, this is a very interesting uh, turn of events, my friends. So let's, let's, let's wrap it up. Let's bring it, bring it to a close. First off, if you're gonna play 1080p gaming, definitely get a dedicated graphics card. Uh, the, the APU as it stands today, it won't make it. <laughs> so it's not worth it. Um, the next thing we learned, the Noctua heatsink is pretty damn good. Performs really well with full CPU load with the stock Noctua fans that come with it. So if you're not looking for anything fancy and you're just looking to air cool something, definitely worth a go. As for the Asetek 645L, this is their 92 millimeter AIO. Hey guys, Editor Turk here. Uh, I had a couple corrections I wanted to throw into this article before we started. Basically, both of these coolers do a really good job in terms of handling the lighter workloads, but not so much for the heavier synthetic workloads. Uh, we really saw this in the, the Asetek AIO's performance metrics, and going back through some of the hardware info data we collected on the Noctua, we were seeing very similar performance. So it's not fair to say that you know, one is better than the other, in that regard. We still don't recommend running either of these in heavy workload applications, but we do have some good news for you. Once we start getting into this, the uh, gaming benchmarks with Valley, we saw temperatures on both the CPU and GPU cold cooler by a few degrees. Couple that with some of the games we played. We played Doom, we played Rust, and the temperatures again were cooler by, you know, three or four degrees. So that begs the question, is the CPU just producing too much heat and it saturates the cooler? Whereas with, you know, the Noctua, you, you, we hadn't saturated it yet. And then the second observation there would be is for low load scenarios, the AIO does a really good job of uh, neutralizing some of the temperature spikes and helps keep things flat and level. We did this all with open air test benches, so you know, keep that in mind when you're doing your builds and that's what we're gonna actually talk about now. Here's the problems I have. If we go with the Noctua cooler, it's not as sexy. Honestly, the three or four degrees that we were seeing in addition with the Noctua cooler is not a bad scenario. The bad parts for this build is for high CPU load scenarios, the heat is all focused on this motherboard and we smell the epoxy starting to heat up. But on the flip side, the airflow is great. The Noctua downdraft air is pushing air onto our NVMe drive a little bit, onto our VREGs, onto our, our DIMMs. So it's like the Noctua cooler satisfies most of the stuff. And then for the Asetek, the AIO, the downsides with that are there is no airflow on this side of the build. So we'll cut some vents on the bottom side of the case and we'll put it on both sides. I'm just trying to see if I can get this all closed and not mounted, but at least uh, you know, sealed. Oh yeah, that closes. I'll you know, give it a little bit of a a love screw. Yeah, that closes, guys. At the end of the day, guys, that is the PlayStation 2 mod. I am super glad we were able to piece it together from concept to reality. I'm glad I got to stream it all live with you guys. It's been a fun time. Make sure you hit that follow button. Go check me out on Twitter. I'm always posting stuff there. Hope you all have a great Saturday night. Appreciate everyone of you. Have a good night.